today's topic, and it's about the martial arts, the kung fu, and also like the weapons and the instruments when they do during the martial arts. The key thing I want to introduce to you. Uh, I'm not so sure any one of you have seen that in the Chinese drama. It's called Chinese Sword. Okay, why it is so special about it? Because not only it has a very long history, a、uh, more than two thousand and five hundred years written history. It is also called the King of a Hundred Soldiers. So the soldiers here doesn't mean like the real person, like the real soldier. It's more referring to the weapons. So among all types of weapons in the ancient history, the Chinese sword is the king of them. So、um, in a lot of like movies and Chinese drama, you will see that like the Asian people they carry the sword along with them. Uh, even though they're walking onto the streets, and this Chinese sword exactly represents the high social status, and to represent the wealth and how the、uh, noble ranking of the man is. That's why the Asian Chinese people they like to carry the sword with them. And today, we are going to learn about a legend, and it's called. Mark on boat to find sword. In Chinese, it is 刻舟求剑 So this legend or this story basically tells us about an Asian Chinese man Chu, ah,、uh, from Chu State. He lost his sword, but he doesn't worry about it at all. So let's go and find out what happened. So long once upon a time, about two thousand seven hundred years ago, and this man from Tuesdays is going to visit his friend. So he dresses up very nicely and carries his precious sword. And when he reaches the harbor, he got on the boat, and surprisingly, his sword attracts everyone's attention. Because if you have A closer look of the sword, you found that it is fully engraved with all the shining diamonds, and the people think that, wow, when looking at this sword, it must be very expensive. So the boatman at the side said, "You warrior, your sword must be very sharp." And this true man, after hearing that. Proudly said, "Of course, if you put a string of hair on my sword and you blow it, you can cut it into half. And if you use the sword to cut the iron, it's like cutting the mat. So how sharp the sword is!" And when the builder hearing that, oh, this sword is so sharp and so expensive, and he gently asked. Would you like to show us the sword dance? And Chu Men answered yes immediately, and he pulls out the sword, and it becomes so shining that everyone cannot keep their eyes open. So the Chu Men starts to do the sword dancing, but suddenly, a big waves on the river comes, and the boat is starting to trembling from left to the right. And this true man quickly grab the edge of the boat, but his sword drop into the river. The boat man looking at the end said anxiously, "I will stop the boat immediately. Please go dive into the water and find the sword." When everyone else is trying to help this man to find his sword, but now he slowly says, "Boat man." Do you have a knife that I can borrow? The boatman feels a little bit confused and asks, "Yes, I do have, but why do you need the knife? So why does the true man need?" 
Now the true man laughs and said, I have a great solution. And the boatman saw this true man put the knife and do a mark on the boat. And this is the place where the sword was dropped. And he rest ashore and back to the seat and um, just have this relaxed position. So you see, everyone's have this uh, question mark on their head because they don't know why the true man is doing the mark on the boat. So let's find out why. So the boatman asked, why do you do the mark on the boat? And the true man proudly and confidently said, previously, I saw a woodman drop his axe into the valley. And he used the mark at the place where the axe was dropped. And then he followed this mark to find his axe. But after hearing that, the boatman laughed so loudly and said, the axe and the valley are moving. But our boat is moving all the time. So what you have learned from the woodman is not applying here. So this is the boatman is trying to explain that uh, when the true man wants to do the mark on the boat to find the sword, it doesn't work. However, the true man waves his hand and said, no. I believe my solution works. And Bowman, you can just keep continuing. So, and this Bowman said, um, and hearing about that, he knows that he cannot convince the true man, so he has to keep moving the boat. And when the boat is going to the offshore and reaches the deck, when the true man dive into the water, but he could not find the sword because the sword was already miles away from the destination. Of course, he could not find the sword. So this is the end of the story about find the sword, um, uh, to mark on the boat in order to find the sword. So after hearing about this story, what do we know about it? So we know that sometimes we should listen to others and listen to others' opinions if the current solution does not solve the problems. And also, we should be aware that, okay, in some cases and in some occasions, one solution cannot solve all the problems, so we have to find the alternatives. And we also need to be flexible by listening to others, and uh, we do uh, the alternatives, and we try to be more adaptive to the environment. So this is about the story uh, where the man lost his sword, but he does not worry about it. So let's uh, take a look at the sword from the king of Wu State. We are going to watch a video very soon. Uh, to learn about the sword from the king of Wu state. But before that, I would like every one of you to take up these two questions. Since the sword it is so expensive and so precious, and in the ancient time, if we see a man is carrying a very long sword, so usually what does it mean? And the question two is, the sword I'm going to introduce about is a very precious and expensive sword. So I want every one of you to pay attention to when the sword was made. All right, so um, is everybody ready for the video? If yes, you can give me a thumb up. Yes, okay, all right, let's get started. So, let's go again. So, so, so,
So this is the overall picture of the sword Guang of King of Wu State. So this is the sword that we are going to learn today, and uh, we we would like to know the details of it and who made it, and also when was it made. A little note here if you see this cross guard from the sword it's decorated with a distorted tao tie pattern okay so this is how the tao tie looks like in the sword and tao tie in uh, the very ancient history is actually uh, one of the very fierce animal so one of the characteristics of the tao tie is like he likes to eat and he can basically eat everything uh, no matter how big it is and how hard it is so this is um uh, where the Tao Tie is and it also means um it also symbolizes the high social status in the Asian society let's continue to find out more details about the sword So this is a part we can know that uh, who made this word. So if you see from the picture here and you see these like glowing Chinese characters. Okay, so these glowing Chinese characters or we call it inscriptions actually tells us the sword was used by Guang, the king of Wu state about 2500 years ago. So if you ever wonder who is the king of Wu State and how does he look like? Yes, you can see from this picture. So the king of Wu State uh, is named He Lü and he's also the military commander of Wu State in the period of late spring and autumn. So if you see from like this head of the sword, you will know that even after 2,500 years now, we can see that the sword is still very sharp in this curving shape. And it also shows that even with a very long time ago, people at that time has already improved the metal technology. 
how do they iron or how do they melt the metal to make the very sharp sword. So this sword also tells us that there is a great development of the technology at that time. Okay, so this is the sword of Guang, king of Wu state that we just um, run through the video. So come back with our questions. So the first question, I didn't post that too much. But if you have heard all the stories I have been mentioned previously and how the decorations on the sword represent the identity and social status, so if you've ever seen an Asian man who is carrying this very long sword, it means that it is a higher social status and is more honorable and it is more noble ranking. And beside that, we also want to know that when was the sword was made? So it was uh, made in the late spring and autumn about 2,500 years ago. So beside that, we also seen the map in the video, right? And with these two Chinese characters. Okay, so you must be wondering, we have been mentioned about like Wu states, like state of Wu. So where is it? So if you see from this map, okay, this is where the uh, Wu of state uh, is now located. So currently it is located very close to Suzhou city in China is also at the east side and very close to Shanghai city as well. And beside that the state of Wu has a great technology um, in manufacturing the swords. We also have the Yue state, which you can see from the below. And this Wu and Yue states, they are very good at sword making. So they help a lot um, at the time, whether it's like during the war time, when other states, they all buy the swords from these two states. And just one, like just two examples, like the swords uh, from the Yue state. And you can see that even like from a few thousand years later, the sword is still very complete. Uh, it is not corrupted and you can still see the sharpness of the sword. So it also means that the superb melting technology at that time, and it can carry along for so many years. However, nowadays we don't use sword for the war. Uh, we are no longer use sword for any of the wars. And in addition, people are actually using the sword for sword dance as an art form or they use it in the martial arts. So uh, you will also see like people using the sword to do the Tai Chi. Yes, that is how the modern society, they adapts the sword into their daily life. So now we are going to see a very uh, great uh, sword dance that is uh, composed, that is created in the modern society.
Okay, so that's the second part of a lighter sword when it becomes very intense in, in the dancing. So if you're interested in it, you can go to the YouTube and find the sword dance. So this is how the current uh, Chinese people, they use sword in their dance. But if you ever want to see how the sword is really look like in real life, I wish to extend my invitation to everyone in front of me to come to the Shanghai city and visit the museum to see the sword from 2,500 years ago. So even though uh, we are unable to meet uh, each other face to face, but today we are going to have this online travel to Shanghai city. So is everyone ready for that? If yes, you can give me a thumb up so we can get started. Yay, okay. So if you want to come to Shanghai, now um, the fastest way is you can take the airport. So you can book the air tickets and you will reach the destination of Pudong International Airport in Shanghai. Just a little bit more information about Shanghai. If you see from this black pane here, okay, this is where the Shanghai is located. Um, it's also it's located at the east side of the China. Okay, so this is the, uh, the map of the whole China. And Shanghai city, apparently it is a very big city and it has a total population of 24.87 billion people. And it's definitely for the younger generations, uh, it's the most popular, um, um, popular city and popular urban area in China. And it's also the popular city in the world. So every year, the Shanghai city welcomes um, people from all around the world, like from America, England, Malaysia, Nepal, Thailand, etc. So if you ever come to here, uh, I would like to introduce um, a little bit of our special celebration during the year. It just passes about one week ago. Um, on this year, 2021, uh, 20th of March is actually of our vernal equinox. Um, it is uh, one of the special day that uh, the people, they will go out, they will celebrate and they will, um, they will have this family togetherness to have the sightseeing of the spring flowers. And if you can see from all those pictures, um, this time it is very special that your duration of the daytime becomes the same of the duration of the nighttime. And we call it in Chinese, Chuan Fen. It's one of the, um, uh, one of the season in the solar terms, in the 24 solar terms. Okay, so uh, when next time you come, I will bring you out and we will have go to the parks and to have the sightseeing of the flowers.